be greeted, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Beloved, before we go to the message for this morning, uh, I just want to firstly greet our senior pastor, Zimama Nobaku Damuga. Uh, there's just not enough words to thank you. Uh, the way that you lead us, uh, we are really truly blessed. And uh, may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord continue to enrich you. Amen. Amen. Then I would like to greet the elders of the church. Uh, thank you so much for the support that you provide to our senior pastors and everything else that you do for our local assembly. Amen. Amen. Then the leadership of the church, the various ministry leaders, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then last but not least, I would like to greet the saints of the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you all this morning, beloved. Amen. 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 Let us just pray for the message quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to once again gather in this fashion, mighty Father. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you open up our hearts this morning, that you touch our hearts, Lord God, that when the word, mighty Father, uh, touches our hearts or goes into our hearts, mighty Father, may it germinate and bear Jesus much fruit. Name. Lord God Almighty, we pray that we are transformed by this word this yes, morning. Lord. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you silence any any noises or distractions that yeah. try to get in the way of us receiving your word, Lord God, God Almighty. God. We pray, Lord yes. Jesus, that mighty Father, we act upon your word, that we don't just receive it yes. and we are entertained by it, but Lord, that we go out and we implement it. In Jesus the wonderful name. name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God Almighty, we give you all the glory and all of the praise. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Beloved, the title for this morning's message is the Issachar Anointing. Amen. 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 Beloved, we, we, are, we are living in a time and season when God wants to do something really powerful and really special through you and I. But beloved, we are also at the same time living in very unprecedented times yeah. when deception is rife. Yeah. Pastor Ayanda preached so powerfully last week about truth yes. and how truth has become distorted. Yes. What is wrong is now popular and what is right is no longer yes. acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just a practical example. A few weeks ago, we, we all woke up to headline news that a South African lady from Tembisa broke the world record. She's now in the Guinness Book World of Records because she delivered 10 babies in one pregnancy. Then weeks went by, the story changed. There were developments, and then we received an apology that the story was a mistake. Beloved, today's message is gonna to touch upon practical areas where we need to have discernment, but also, not just in the natural, but also spiritual discernment like yeah. the sons of Issachar. Yeah. Amen. Beloved, when I, re when I refer to the sons of Issachar, I refer to the sons and daughters of Issachar. Amen. In other words, the tribe of Issachar. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, we know that God works in seasons and times. And we know that God operates outside of our time. Amen. Amen. In other words, God is not confined to working in 60 seconds in a minute. Yeah. Or working in 60 minutes to an hour or 24 hours in a day. Amen. He works in terms of his appointed times. In other words, his Kairos times. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now the sons of Issachar were able to discern this. They were able to receive deep insight from the Lord as to what was happening and what the Lord was doing at a particular point in time. Yeah. Not only that, they were also able to discern what the Lord was going to do next. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, declares that the people who know their God will be strong and carry yeah. out great exploits. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, they will be sprung into action. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This means that the opposite to Daniel eleven thirty-two 32 is that those who do not know their God will be weak yeah. and slow to act. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved, I hope that this morning's message will spring you into action. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We are in a season of many divine realignments. Every believer needs the Issachar anointing in order to not miss what God is doing. Yes. Yes. In the Hebrew tradition, the appointed times are known as Moadims. So the seven festivals of the Hebrew calendar are the seven Moadims of Yahweh. And these are the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 
the feast of the first fruits, Shavuot, which was on Pentecost, the feast of trumpets, which is Rosh Hashanah, the day of atonement, which is Yom Kippur, and then lastly, the feast of Tabernacle. Now, these Jewish festivals all give us an, indi an indication of where we are on God's calendar. Yeah. Yes. The first four festivals have already been fulfilled through Yeshua. Yeah. But the last three are yet to be fulfilled. Amen. 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 Now the sons of Issachar were able to guide the nation of Israel as to what was going to happen next. As a matter of fact, they were even able to tell the nation of Israel when each festival would take place. Amen. Amen. In the wilderness, they didn't have a calendar like we have on our walls. They needed to be able to be guided by the sons of Issachar based on what was happening in terms of the signs that God said he would show them. Amen. Amen. They understood when it was time to plant, when it was time to till the land, when it was time to plow and harvest. So everyone watched what the sons of Issachar were doing. They simply did exactly what the sons of Issachar were doing, and they were right. Amen. 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 Beloved, I'm not for one second suggesting that we follow blindly yeah. those who lead us or those who have prophetic, prophetic insight. Yeah. But beloved, what I try to highlight in this message is how important it is for each and every one of us to have this Issachar anointing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, it can, and it can happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The passage of scripture in the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 27, says that his anointing teaches you about all things. So it does not matter who you are or what you can do with your own strength. The anointing is the X factor. It's the difference between what you can do and what God can do. Amen. So the Isika anointing is the ability to see sooner. It is the ability to see further. Yeah. It is the ability to see deeper. Yeah. It is also the ability to see with spiritual eyes like Elisha. Yeah. Who didn't just see enemies' armies, but he also saw angel armies all around him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We need the spiritual gift of discernment Hallelujah. more now than ever. Yeah. We are seeing prophetic uh, 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 events in the Bible unfolding much quicker and at a faster pace than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to see with prophetic eyes and to hear with prophetic ears. Yes. Now who were these sons of Issachar or the tribe of Issachar? First of all, Issachar was one of the sons of Jacob. And there was a tribe of the, of the 12 tribes that was called Issachar. So when we refer to the tribe of Issachar, we're referring to that particular grouping of individuals, a very special grouping of individuals, an amazing group of men and women of God. Amen. Amen. We are introduced to them very early on in the Bible. And we see that the anointing that they had enabled them to understand seasons and times so much that it was this unique ability that was not popular at various times. But they were obedient. Yeah. That's one of the things I really want us to take out of this message is obedience, beloved. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So the sons of Issachar understood chronological time. We've established that. But they also understood spiritual and political time. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. The sons of Issachar could discern what God was doing and when he was going to do it. Yeah. They knew that when one move of God was ending, which one was going to start? Ah. They could discern when a leader was falling and another one was being raised up. Hallelujah. They could even tell you who the next leader would be. They knew who to follow and when to follow him or her. Amen. Amen. Now those who are able to understand the times and the seasons are able to influence generations. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's have a look at the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 21. Which tells us that God changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and removes them. Yeah. Yeah. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Yeah. And then two verses down in the book of Daniel at chapter 2 verse 23. Daniel says, you have made known to us the dreams of kings sure. or the dreams of the king. Which means that God gave him solutions to the king's problems. Yeah. 
Beloved, wouldn't it be wonderful if we were the ones as the church coming up with the solutions for all the problems that humanity is faced with right now? Amen. Beloved, I, I, I was watching uh, something on, on, um, on, a, on an internet channel and they were saying that apparently in one of the states in America, I think it was Texas, there are actually more people that have died from suicide than COVID. Now that bothered me because in my spirit it didn't sit well because I thought to myself, how can that be when you've got so many churches in that state? That these people felt so hopeless and and just that they were down and out, that that had to happen. But more importantly, the spiritual discernment that the sons of Issachar had should guide us in this season of where and when we need to intervene and come up with solutions. Amen. Amen. Now Issachar, as I said, who was this, one of the sons of Jacob, was named after the concept of recompense and reward. And indeed the Lord does reward those who diligently seek him. Yes. Not only did the sons of Issachar understand the times, but they also understood the importance of obedience. Yes. You see, the key to understanding the times and being like the sons of Issachar is simple. You have to have a close relationship with God. Yes. Yes. This is when you know God through his son Yeshua and by that, you also know his ways. You meditate on his word day and night. Now, the New Testament declares that we have a better covenant with better promises. So in the church age, all of this, this, the disciples of the Lord should have discernment and be wise like the sons of Issachar. Which means that every one of us should have the gift of discernment and understanding. Because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit since the day of Pentecost. How is this possible, you may ask, that every believer can have the Issachar anointing? There is a very interesting story in the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 16 to 30. I'm not going to read the, the scriptures. Where, but this is where the Lord tells Moses, after the nation of Israel in the wilderness were complaining that they, they were tired of eating manna. They wanted meat and fish and uh, the cucumbers and the melons and garlic that they had back in Egypt that they didn't have to pay for, even though they were slaves. So Moses goes to God and he says, this is too much, too, this is too heavy a burden for me to carry. These people are just overbearing. They want meat. Can you provide us with meat, please, Lord? So... The Lord, so God tells Moses to gather 70 of the elders and leaders and officials in the camp. And he tells Moses to bring them to the tent of meeting. And the Lord was going to meet them there. So Moses goes about the camp and he selects 70 elders and leaders. And he tells them that the Lord has asked me to select you. Let's go to the tent of meeting, which was the place of prayer where Moses went to pray and speak to the Lord. So when they get there, the spirit of the Lord that was upon Moses was then shifted and placed upon these elders. But two of the 70 did not come to the tent of meeting. Their names were Eldad and Medad. They actually stayed behind in the camp. Some rabbinic writings suggest that they didn't go to the tent of meeting because they felt that they were not worthy. So they stayed behind. Whatever the reason was, they stayed in the camp. We know that. When the Spirit of the Lord descended upon the 68 at the tent of meeting, at the same time it descended upon Eldad and Medad in the camp. Yes. And they also started prophesying like the 68 that were at the tent of meeting. Amen. Amen. When this happened, a young man then ran from the, 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 the camp to the tent of meeting to tell Moses about the fact that Eldad and Medad were prophesying back at the camp. And then Joshua tries to step in and he says, we have to stop them. But it's interesting how Moses responds. He says, do not be jealous on my behalf, Joshua. As a matter of fact, 
I wish that all of the Lord's yeah. people yeah. were prophets. Yeah. Yeah. And that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Yeah. Yeah. So these two were physically distant from where Moses was at the tent of meeting with the 68. They probably didn't think of themselves worthy. But the Lord still descended upon them. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, beloved, that no matter how unpopular you may be, you may not be someone who's, who's out there. You may not be someone at the front lines or at the forefronts. You may not be someone that is known for prophetic insight. But I believe, beloved, that the Lord wants to raise up people at this point in time. Amen. And I'd like to encourage you, beloved, that even if you feel like you are in the minority, I know that social media has almost engineered us to think that if you have the, a lot of people following you, or a lot of people liking what you are posting, yeah. then you are saying the right thing, yeah. or you are acting in the right manner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, beloved, that in the kingdom of God, that is not necessarily the case. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, that's why we need, during these times, beloved, to inquire of the Lord. What is it that you want us to do right now as the body of Christ? What are you calling us to do as individuals and as a collective? What role do you want us to play, Lord? We see many empires around us collapsing. They talk about the great reset, or the great global reset. A new normal, new way of doing things. In Isaiah, Chapter 43, verse 19, God speaks through the prophet Isaiah and he says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Yes. Yeah. Now it springs forth. It springs forth. Do you perceive it? Sure. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Wow. Beloved, God is doing a new thing. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. we must be able to discern what he is doing. Yes. Whenever God would move the 12 tribes of Israel, there was a particular order in which they would line up. As they moved from one place to another, the tribe of Judah would line up first. Yes. And they were renowned for being worshippers. So the Lord would lead with them from the front. As we know, worship ushers us into the presence of the Lord. And then secondly would be the tribe of Issachar. Now, the tribe of Issachar were very interesting people. And you'll see as we go on that nobody could really read them. Okay. You know, at different times, people just followed what they were doing because of their track record, I, I suppose. Now, they were obviously the ones with the wisdom and great discernment. Sure. Then the third tribe would be the tribe of Zebulun. Now, the tribe of Zebulun were the financiers of the time. Sure. They basically had all the money. I don't know what we call them these days. <laughs> God, therefore, has this sequence. It was quite interesting that these three groups represented different types of tribes. They were very different in terms of their characteristics. But <clears throat> one could say that these groups represent the kings because of the wealth of the uh, tribe of Zebulon. They had the wealth of kings. The priests, which would be the tribe of Issachar, because they were the prayer warriors and the intercessors. And they, they knew the word of God. They were very good. They were teachers of the law, of God's law. And then the worshippers, which would be obviously the, the tribe of Judah. Now, this model in the Old Testament, we see it very clearly. But now through the power of Christ in us, we are called to be all three. Kings, priests, and worshippers, sure. all in one. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible tells us that if any of you lacks wisdom, yeah. you should ask God, who yeah. gives generously to all without finding fault, yeah. and it will be given to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now let us look at a few examples of how astute the sons of Issachar were. Firstly, they supported a female ruler when it was not popular to do so. Okay. Sure. Okay. So in the times when Israel was governed by judges, yeah. 
which was before it had kings, around 1100 BC, a woman named Deborah rose up to be the king of, or the judge of the land. Yeah. Although women had rights in Israel at the time, it would have been unusual for a lady to sit in authority over the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, God was with Deborah. Yeah. He placed her in authority. Amen. And the sons of Issachar knew it. Sure. So they were not moving with the trends or what was popular. Yeah. They knew that God had anointed Deborah to rule over the Israelites. So they were fully behind her. Yeah. And they were even willing to go to war on her behalf. Yeah. It's amazing, beloved, how God had revealed this to them. Their decision to support Deborah must have been very controversial at the time. But they did not have the fear of man. Instead, they were driven by the fear of God. This is a very important characteristic, beloved, because many of us are not moving in, in our spiritual walk. We are not moving into places, into areas where we are supposed to go in and advance the kingdom. One of the main factors is the fear of man. And it's not only the fear of man, it means we put the fear of man above the fear of God. We see this in the book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 15, which tells us that the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. Secondly, they supported King David before he became king. He was not popular with King Saul, who was still on the throne. When we read in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 12, verses 23 to 37, we see that when David was still in hiding because King Saul wanted to kill him, and before David could take over from Saul as king of Israel, all of the 12 tribes of Israel went to meet with David at Hebron. And when they arrived, they came in their thousands to acknowledge David as the incoming king. But the tribe of Issachar only had 200 chiefs show up. 200. Even half a tribe would have 120,000. The tribe of Issachar had 200. But the rest of the army, David's men of valor, were at their command. Amen. If we read 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, I don't know who may have another mic, Mahum Pashel, if you can assist me. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Amen. So we see that the rest of these thousands were listening to these 200. They were not even men of war. They were not renowned for going out into battle. It's quite interesting, beloved, that God's military strategy is not like ours. In our own human understanding, you need numbers to win wars or battles. But God can work through a minority, an obedient minority. Amen. All the tribes were split in their support for David, except one tribe. That was the tribe of Issachar, that was united in their support for David. That was another feature of the tribe of Issachar. They were united. That was a great sign of their obedience. David became the next king and remains the most famous king of Israel in all of history to yes. this day. Yes. So, just to encourage you again, beloved, in the body of Christ, if you are someone who may still be growing in the prophetic anointing, be encouraged that even though you may have situations where you are in the minority, stand by the prophetic truth that is revealed to you. Amen. 
powerful thing that we can learn from the sons of Issachar is that apart from the incredible anointing that they had upon them, they kept looking ahead. They didn't just remain complacent, but they kept seeking after God to reveal what he was yet to do next, what he was going to do in future. In other words, they, they, they did not just simply receive prophetic insight and get excited by it and dwell on it at that point in time. They received it, they acted upon it, and they sought the Lord's face. They said, Lord, tell us what are you doing next? What do you want us to do next? They were always willing to move forward. Amen? So they were not stuck on prophetic insight from yesterday or from today. Amen? We therefore need to keep looking ahead, beloved, yeah. and constantly pressing into what the Father wants us to do at this critical time. Amen. There are a lot of unanswered questions right now. Yeah. Everywhere we look, everything from the financial markets to the constrained healthcare system, tourism, the list goes on. Yeah. But the sons of Issachar in their time were not surprised because they had inside knowledge and understanding of what God wanted for them. So regardless of what they faced, they were not faced. Hallelujah. And we need to remember that. The good news, beloved, is that you and I can also have the anointing of the sons of Issachar. We can have the same ability to discern the times and the seasons. If God gave the sons of Issachar a special spiritual ability, he's willing to give it to you and me. Amen. Amen. So we need to ask the Holy Spirit to give us the spirit of discernment that was upon the tribe of Issachar. Amen. 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 When Moses spoke a blessing over the tribes of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 18, Moses said about the, about the tribe of Zebulun, Rejoice Zebulun in your going out. And you, Issachar, in your tent. Now, this implies that the tribe of Issachar lived a life of prayer and intercession. Because they spent their time in the tent praying and speaking to God. While the tribe of Zebulun went out because they were the merchants of the time. That's why they were the financiers. They had the money. So they were the traders of the time. Amen. Now, there's an interesting Hebrew principle or proverb that says no flower no Torah no Torah no flower what does that mean flour is used to bake bread so that represents sustenance and economic activity the Torah is the law of God now the Jews know that God had instructed them to spend a lot of their time in the word of God to get closer to him. But what they also understood is that they couldn't, they couldn't just spend their time in the word. They had to also go out and make a living for sustenance. So when they say no flower, no Torah, it means you have to have a balance. Amen? Can you turn to your neighbor and say no flower, no Bible? No Bible, no flower. Amen. So, in the church age, we are expected to balance the two. The tribes of Zebulun and the tribes of Issachar, what they would do is that they would exchange. So the tribe of Zebulun would go out. We are told that they would go out onto ships and trade and sell and buy and sell. They would then come back because the tribe of Issachar had lots of teachers and scholars of the word. They would come back and they would trade with them so that the, the tribe of Issachar would share insights and knowledge with them. Wow. Amen. So that is how they would balance each other. Wow. Amen. Wow. Now, can we turn to Jeremiah chapter 8 verses 7 to 9. If you can just read it. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 8 Verses 7, 8, and 9. Even the migratory birds are punctual to their seasons. Yes, the stock, excelling in the great height of their flight, 
in the heavens knows her appointed times of migration. And the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane observe the time of their return. But my people do not know the law of the Lord, which the lower animals instinctively recognize in so far as it applies to them. How can you say we are wise and we have the written law of the Lord and we are learned in its language and teachings? Behold, the truth is, the lying pen of the scribes has made of the law a falsehood, a mere code of ceremonial observances. The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken captive. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom and broad, full of intelligence is in them. Amen. So we see, beloved, that even the animals know God's appointed times and season. The animals know when to hibernate and when to come out. They are obedient to God's seasons in the natural. So what we see in the scripture is that when we reject the word of God, we lack the kind of wisdom that the sons of Issachar had. And if the Lord is willing to reveal this to even the animals, how much more will he reveal these things to us as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, made in his image and likeness? Now, the next characteristic of the sons of Issachar is that they were a group of people who, who, who I would say, earned the friendship of God. They were so close to, to God. They had such a close relationship to God that God revealed these divine things to them. We see when Sodom and Gomorrah were about to be destroyed, God spoke to Abraham. Now, beloved, we are told in the scriptures that he was the one man that God saw as the person who could intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. But the problem was that there were not enough righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. We see that when Abraham starts pleading with the Lord, in fact, can we go to Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 and 17 first? If we can read them, Mamun Pashet, Mamun Pashet. Yeah, Genesis 18, verses 16 and 17. The men rose up from there and faced towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham, my friend and servant, what I'm about to do? Amen. We see there that God, first of all, asks himself, should I hide what I'm about to do from Abraham? And then he refers to him as his friend and servant. Amen. 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 So we need to have this close relationship with God such that God says, I need to tell this to my faithful son or daughter. So that they know what is going to happen. Amen. Amen. As much as good things happen when the dreams of our leaders are revealed to us, there are many things that are done by the same leaders that are against God's will. And this is where we come in, beloved. God is looking for just one man or woman who can stand in the gap, like in the book of Ezekiel. God is saying at this time, can I find one man or woman who can stand in the gap and pray? Who can intercede? Who can share the burden? God can give prophetic insights to many. But there are only a few to whom he can share his heart. We all know that God then decided to reveal to Abraham what he was about to do. The response from Abraham here shows us that he was carrying the heart of God. And he was sharing the burden in God's heart. When he asked God, if, if there were 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, would you still destroy it? 
He counted all the way down to five people. Yeah. Unfortunately, there were none. Sure. So the question is, beloved, are you prepared to stand in the gap and be that believer who is willing to share the burden of God if he shares his heart with you? Now the sons of Issachar realized that the one thing that is unshakable is God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ is unassailable, beloved. Hallelujah. It's unshakable. Yeah. Yeah. It has gone through centuries and centuries and survived. Yeah. Yeah. You have to understand, beloved, that the church of Jesus Christ still continues on, notwithstanding all the corruption in some areas within the church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We see that when King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, this was the interpretation. And we see this in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But itself, but it will itself endure forever. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This was the prophetic word from Daniel that came to pass with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the coming down of the Holy Spirit and the inauguration of the church. That is the kingdom that is being referred to by Daniel that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to other people. It will crush all other kingdoms, but will itself endure forever. Amen. Amen. The writer of the book of Hebrews captures this point in chapter 12, verses 26 to 29. Perhaps we can read that, uh, Mamun Pahlele. Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 26 to 29. Then at Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he has given a promise. Yet once more I will shake and make tremble not only the earth, but also the starry heavens. Now this expression, yet once more, indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken, that is, of that which has been created, in order that what cannot be shaken may remain and continue. Let us, therefore, receiving a kingdom that is firm and stable and cannot be shaken, offer to God pleasing worship and acceptable worship with modesty and pious care and godly fear and awe. For our God is indeed a consuming fire. Amen. Now, these are the characteristics of the sons and daughters of Issachar that God is raising up for a time such as this, beloved. In fact, if we go back to Daniel chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, we see that when King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were called to pray about the dream to be revealed. So before it was revealed, this was the process. Yeah. We read that Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends. He urged them to plead for mercy from, from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Amen. Amen. You see, the problem, beloved, is sometimes we only pray because we are about to face execution. Yeah. Or we are going through difficult times. Amen? Yeah. So this passage of scripture also highlights to us the importance of us getting together like Daniel and his three friends to pray over the dreams of our leaders because God has placed them in authority yeah. 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 and will cause them to have dreams about the plans regarding that particular nation. Yeah. Amen? I know that our president is speaking tonight. Yeah. We don't know what he's going to say. 
But may we have this posture that Daniel and his friends had. We also need to pray for revelation of our dreams as well, beloved. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When we pray together, God gives us divine insight. God will therefore make known to us the dreams of our leaders as the sons and daughters of Issachar of our times. This is how Joseph received insight into the dream about the seven years of harvest and seven years of famine. And also receive the solution. Amen. Amen. We as the church need to pray together for prophetic insight and deeper insights about what God is doing at this time in our city, in our province, in the nation, on the continent, and indeed around the world. In closing, beloved, what does it mean to walk in the Issachar anointing? Firstly, it means pragmatism. In other words, you have to become more practical. Because it's amazing, beloved, how logic sometimes eludes a lot of people when they're faced with a crisis. Fear can really make people do some really strange and uncharacteristic things. The Bible tells us that God's people perish for lack of knowledge. But this is not so for those who walk in the Issachar anointing. Amen? Because they have the insight and understanding that the Lord has revealed to them. Amen? Secondly, prophetic insight and hard work. So, being prophetic does not exempt us from hard work. Amen. 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 You know, I, I've just illustrated how the sons of Issachar were prayer warriors, they were intercessors, they stayed in the tents and they prayed and they were teachers and scholars of the word of God. But when it was time to fight, they went out to fight on behalf of Deborah. Sure. 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 Amen. Amen. So you can be hard working based on prophetic insight that has been revealed to you by God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Remember the Hebrew proverb which says, no Torah, no flower. Yes. Yes. No flower, no flower, no Torah. Yes. You cannot simply have the one without the other. Yes. You cannot simply be hard working without the word of God. Yes. And you cannot be filled with the word of God and have prophetic insight but yet be lazy. Yes. Just to highlight also, beloved, the importance of giving hope where people see hopelessness. You know, when the, when, when, when the tribes of Israel were gathering at Hebron to meet with David, I can just imagine the, the joy and happiness when they saw the tribe of Issachar. Only 200 of them showed up. They must have been so happy to see them because the tribe of Issachar were able to tell them when to go to war and when not to go to war. We know that God works with minorities. We saw even with Gideon, where God said, reduce the numbers, there's too many. Reduce the numbers, there's too many. Until only 300 were left. Amen. Now, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people are feeling hopeless. A lot of people are down and out, or they're feeling down and out. But we see hope, beloved. Because we see the bigger picture which reveals where God is taking us. Hallelujah. We know that our story does not end here. Amen. Our story does not end where we are with this pandemic. Amen. What I love about understanding the times, beloved, is that you don't just understand the current times, but you also understand where the current times are leading us. And this is where we derive our hope from. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. We know that at the end, God will prevail. Yes. His plan was set out even before he laid the foundations of the earth. Yes. And it is contained in his word. Yes. So moving in the Issachar anointing during turbulent times will help us to reach out to the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The world is fearful at this point in time, without hope and confused. They cannot discern the times or seasons, and they need an Issachar to show them the way. Amen. Amen. We see in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 27, which says that all of creation will be shaken so that only the unshakable things remain. There are lots of things that are on shaky ground, beloved, right now. Millions of businesses, millions of jobs. We are seeing industries, school systems, government agencies, the healthcare systems are all shaken. But the kingdom of God shall remain yeah. forever. Yeah. 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 I truly believe that the season that we are in now, beloved, is meant to remind us that Jesus is still our rock of all ages. Oh, yes. 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 And in him, we will always have stability. Yes. Yes. Especially in shaky times such as yes. this. Yes. So if you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God, who is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, then God can cause you to operate in the prophetic anointing. Yes. Like the sons and daughters of Issachar. Amen. amen and amen. 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 I'd just like to invite Ubaba, sure. Pastor, to just uh, close for us, Baba Jamuga, in prayer, just to thank God for the message that we have received this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for assuring this one and that one that they also matter before you. This prophetic anointing is not for the elite few. It is not for the chosen few, but it's for every believer whosoever desires to know the mysteries of God can press into his presence. Thank you, Lord, that you have no prejudice. You have no favorite children. But we place ourselves in positions of favor by drawing closer to you. And I pray in Jesus' name that every one of us may desire that intimacy. Oh God, I pray that like the sons of Issachar, help us to remain in that tent searching after your heart, seeking after your face. May we be like Moses, Father, and say, show us your glory. Because without your wisdom, without your prophetic insight, Father, we are doomed just like the rest of the nations of the world. They don't know what's happening. They cannot tell even their right hand from their left hand. There is so much so much darkness that covers nations. But I see sons and daughters of the Most High God rising up in the glory of the Most High God. And Isaiah the prophet says of them, Arise, shine, for the glory of God is risen upon you. Darkness covers the nations. Thick darkness is over the people. But you arise, for your light has come. And you said in your word, the kings of the earth will come to the dawn of our light. Oh, Father, like Baba Koza has just said, how beautiful it will be when the nations of the earth can look to the church for answers. Right now, we're being regulated for our own fallacies, for our own immoralities, for our own wrongdoings. And we we'll repent of it, Father. Right now we pray that we be the kind of institution that will bring hope to this hopeless world. I pray for the remnant, Father. May you raise the sons of Issachar. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. That was a good word, amen. Thanks, Bob Cosmo. That was a good word. And I pray that uh, you may run with it. We, we have an assurance that uh, everyone of us can be prophetic. Amen. What I love about the new covenant is that you don't have to consult some funny prophet somewhere. You know, you, 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 you can go into the most holy place on your own. My, my, my strongest belief is that all of us need to be trained. 
I, I like uh, what uh, Babu Koza quoted the incidents where Moses says, I wish yeah. all of God's people were prophets. Do you know that God is going to fulfill that in these last days? Joel 2 28, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all, not some, upon all flesh. The word of God says, Your sons and daughters will do what? Prophesy. Prophesy. So maybe, maybe you are the generation that will be an answer to Moses' prayer. I wish all of God's people would prophesy. What if you are that generation that will see the fulfillment of Moses' wish? I wish all of God's people will prophesy. The Bible says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. It says, your young people will see visions. Old people will dream dreams, divine dreams. May that be your portion. Hallelujah. And, and I like again, of course, I was emphasizing these dreams are more than just cars. Yes. This is just more than about more than about us dreaming about cars and houses. These are national dreams. These dreams have international implications. These dreams have economic implications. These dreams have political implications. And I pray that the Lord may deposit them upon you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been a, a, a joke for the past uh, few days, you know, where's my iPad, where's my iPad? But I pray that you, <laughs> may the president find you <laughs> while he's looking for his iPad. I pray that he may find a Joseph, a Daniel, who will say, Mr. President, you don't have to find your iPad. Ah, this is the wisdom of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise my iPad. <laughs> May the Lord find you. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you can be the Josephs of our times? Amen. The Daniels of our times. Amen. Who will say to Pharaoh, who will say to Nebuchadnezzar, this is the word of the Lord. There is something else that I, 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 I particularly noted as well because I was sharing. That the sons of Zebulun were willing to pay silver and gold to the sons of Issachar for their wisdom. That's powerful. That is powerful. Because this again is consistent with scripture. If Pharaoh was willing to promote Joseph for his divine wisdom and make him the highest ranking leader in Egypt, my God, it means our wisdom is more than silver and gold in terms of wealth. Praise the name of Jesus. When Daniel interpreted that dream, literally in one day, Daniel could have easily become the wealthiest man in Babylon. Listen to Daniel. He says, keep your silver and gold to yourself. <laughs> but the king proceeded to give him anyway. <laughs> Why? Because they see value in divine wisdom. Praise the name of Jesus. Think about this. Think about this. I like that about Koza. The trading between Zebulun and the sons of Issachar. Think about this. The kings of the earth and the queens of the earth will come to Solomon with silver and gold just to listen to his wisdom. Think about that. Just to listen to the wisdom of the Lord. Someone will just come with silver and gold. And this is what it says in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. It says, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, than the profits of silver. And her gain than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. That is the wisdom that Bamkosa is talking about. May that wisdom be upon you. We are going to get into a season where silver and gold will be paid for you to open your mouth. Praise the name of Jesus. And it's not because you will be running after that silver and gold, but there will be so much anointing upon you. There will be so much divine revelation and understanding upon you. The kings of the earth will bring silver and gold 
to say, please say something, say something, say something. Praise God. God is saying, Amen. Yes. We are going to receive strange invitations. Yes. As Bob Cosa was speaking, there is an anointing in this house. By being here, you will be leaded and hunted. It, it, it's about time we descend phone calls that come in because there's going to be a lot of numbers you don't know that will be coming through. Yeah. Amen. We just need to get ready for this anointing. Hallelujah. You will be needed. Yeah. Companies are going to call you Hallelujah. and say we had yeah. Dinga. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are entering into a season where where God is going to just surprise us and, 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 and even financially. Wealth transfer has started in this house. Amen. But when I was sitting down, the Holy Spirit was saying, we need to have a posture of worship and not complain. May God give us, you know, the insight to be able to see further than where we are. Because it is our portion that is going to disqualify us. We need to carry this portion of gratitude, worship, thanksgiving. Yes. Let us get rid of complaining. And, you know, let us just make ourselves fear of anything and that, 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 that insult what has been with us till this far. But in the season of COVID, I am going to finance my people where companies are retrenching, but my people are going to be at another level financially. You know, as I was sitting down and even listening to, 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 to the testimonies, he was saying this is the beginning. There are those who do not have jobs right now, but are going to be so, 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 so overwhelmed with God's provision. Man and Vela, that they thought it was going to come this way, but God just opens another door that you have not seen. Hallelujah. And so let us position ourselves for what is about to come. So he gave me this word, I will pour water on a dry and weary land. On a plate, you know, when you think nothing can grow from from this, you know, that, that's how barren it looks, that's how dry it looks. But he's saying, I'm pouring water so that God is going to rain down something. Basalan, we need to position the word is positioned itself to receive. Hallelujah! Now, we, 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 there's more coming that is abundantly, exceedingly uh, uh, more than we can think or imagine. And also do not think of just one thing. Be open. Because God is going to surprise us. And when you see you one spoke of God suddenly and this is the season. Not because it feels good, but I wanted to say this is the season of suddenness. But really, that's what God is saying. Hallelujah. And so let us, you know, get rid of all the complaining and why not and why not and how long, Lord, and how long and how long must I wait for this and say, Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory, we give you the praise for what you are about to do. And we thank you for the Issachar anointing that we will be hard hunted by companies, by politicians, by, they will be asking, we need those people to give us direction. Hallelujah. Let us arm ourselves with the word of God. Let us pray. Time for sleeping. 24 hours is over. We need to be arming ourselves with the word of God and getting ready for what God is about to do. When other people are confused, we cannot be the confused ones because we understand what it, when everything looks chaotic, it is when the signs of God must manifest and we need to ask God, what should we be manifesting within this season? Because there is greatness that is coming. And may we just be ready. Get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. Let us get, I'm so excited. Hallelujah in the spirit. I'm so excited. Which Lord, what is it that you want to do through me? Because there is a lot coming. Hallelujah. COVID is just, you know, a, a detour. Some of those who are not 
listening in the spirit are going to be, you know, you know, crippled by COVID. But those whose ears and eyes in the spirit are open, we are going to see and hear what God wants us to do in this season. Hallelujah. Baba siya po nga. Signigas rito mo nga smudo. Koskumo bako. And Father, we're saying, do it. Do it, Father. As you please, do it, Father. And right now we're saying whatever you're doing in this season, we want to participate. Jesus, Holy Name, we don't want to be bystanders, of God, bystanders, Father. We don't want to be spectators of God. We want to be active, active participants in Jesus, Holy Name. When others are scoffing, we want to say, Lord, you will be done in our midst as it is done in heaven. In Jesus, Holy Name. When people are saying it's all over, we say we press on. Jesus, my name. When people see hopelessness, we see hope in the name of Jesus. We shall.